everybody. Welcome back to Worship Wednesday. Forgive the work hair. Been under a hairnet all day. It looks awful. Goodness gracious, and I look like a carrot. But anyway, <laughs> so we're doing Let God Fight Your Battles by Joyce Mayer. Now, like I said, had stated in another, uh, in last week's Worship Wednesday, um, this book is written like a very detailed instruction manual. I personally don't feel like that direction with this. This is not what I meant to get out of that at this time of the reading. So that is not where I'm taking this Worship Wednesday. I That's not to say I don't get something out of it. That's not to say that I'm never, I'm not going to finish it because I am getting quite a bit out of this. And I feel like this is a book I would go back and read again. And I might be meant to get something different out of it at another time. But right now, the detailed instruction is not what I meant to get. So let us continue with what I got out of part three. So part three was we don't have the world with worldly weapons. Say that five times fast. We don't have the world we, we I can't do it. I, I can't even get it twice fast. So you know what we mean. Don't have the worldly weapons to get the battle done. So the worldly weapons that, you know, most people think of when you think going to battle, guns, knives, you know, words to, you know, verbal arguments. And that's not the way this, that our battles should be fought. The battles that we are dealing with, yes, they're in the worldly realm, but we need to fight them on a spiritual level. Those weapons being prayer, praise, worship, and thanks to God. Those are our weapons that we need to fight and they will get you through any battle no matter if it's just yourself you're fighting or trying to change or the world at large. So we've already gone over asking God, praying to God for what you need help with, for what you'd like to change, um, and any, any other needs and wants. But the quality of the prayer matters almost more than the quantity of prayer. You can pray every day, but if you don't mean it, it ain't going to come to nothing. You really need to mean what you say and say what you mean. A good, I guess, quality, uh, quality control measure is if you're praying and you get confused by what you're saying, imagine being on the receiving end of all that confusion. I know that if I'm talking with people and they're confused, I have a hard time deciphering what they really mean. So it's no really no different on the other end. And while a good long conversation with God is absolutely the best, make sure you mean that conversation. We're not talking send him gossip from, you know, four people over in your neighborhood. This needs to concentrate on your needs and the needs needs of other people. Not necessarily wants, but that's completely between you and God. Um, I'm all for praying what you want. That doesn't mean you're going to get it. Anyway, moving on. I can go all over with that one. Excuse me while I look at my notes. Sorry about the noise in the background. Apparently my husband has decided pressure washing his motorcycle would be a good idea. But anyway, praise and worship there is always, always appropriate. It is always the in thing as far as God is concerned. And as far as you're concerned as someone who loves God. However, that being said, some forms of praise and worship are not always appropriate at all times. Now, you wouldn't bow your head to pray while you're gripping the steering wheel driving down the road. Just saying. But, whoops, you okay? Your heart can always worship no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. You know, you don't have to be at work constantly reciting a prayer. Excuse me. There. You don't have to be at work constantly reciting a prayer and singing praise and worship songs. But 
your heart can always worship. In your mind, you can say all you want to God. He will hear you. He will hear your heart. He will hear what you're saying in your mind. Sing a song. Say a prayer. It'll be heard. Worship creates an atmosphere of positivity that God can work in. And it also transforms us by starting his work in us. I am, I kind of liken it to the fact or to my situation where I don't like to go into work and do my job if I know it's going to be a lot of negativity. If I know I'm going to get a lot of flack, I don't want, I don't like to work. Do I want to give God that same working atmosphere that I don't, I personally don't like and wouldn't like to work in? I try very hard not to. Yes, sometimes I forget. I am human, I make mistakes, I forget things, and yes, yeah, sometimes, I'm not saying I fill his workspace with negativity, but I don't always actively worship when I forget myself. Now, we need to praise and worship, but it's not like we need to because we want to get things from God. As a Christian woman it is something I want to do I want him to know that I think he is the most awesome God and I am in awe and just struck by his power and the things that he can do for me and in my life the things he's done for me and in my life not because I deserve them because because he knows I I don't no matter how hard I try I will never deserve all God does for me. Miscellaneous. Sometimes we're given words by God. Uh, we might hear things or see things as reminders, um, as instructions from him. Just mess We might hear just messages from him in some way, shape, or form that fill us with excitement, that fill us with just this renewed strength and faith. They fill us with confidence and just they fill us with a fearlessness oftentimes shortly after the they're felt after the message is heard they're forgotten something that I find that I like to do is when I hear a message I like to write down in my journal what it is I heard the date whoops not necessarily like the time unless it's relevant but I always write down the date, the message, and what it was in regards to if it's not obvious via the message. Um, I just, A, they're important to me. What is being said is from God and God cannot lie. So I know what's being said is important because I don't know about you, but I don't hear a message from God every single time I turn around. I don't hear a message from God every time I want to, you know, grab a book, uh, grab a cookie or type a letter. When I do hear from him, it, it, it makes an impact on me. So I note it. Now, as quick as the feelings are forgotten, so too sometimes are the words. Another reason why I like to write them down. But those words, those messages that he sends to us, as well as his written word, should be revisited when we are fighting battles, be it a battle with ourself, whoops, sorry about that, be it a battle of our, but you know, with ourself or an external battle, anytime we are fighting negativity and something in life, we should be turning to the words that he has given us. And those are the message he sent to us and the words that he has written. Excuse me, stray hair. We also need to remember that those messages that were given and the words in the Bible, God cannot lie. What he says, what he promises, what he declares will happen. It might not happen on your time, it may not happen in your time, but it will happen. So his promises are ones that you can depend on and you can remain just firm in the belief that you will be delivered. Which leads us to 
remembering to give thanks to God for his mercy, for his love, for his blessings in our lives, for working on our situation. It just give thanks to God for anything he does for us. Being God is a thankless job. The negatives are remembered much more often than the positives. The I wants and I needs far outweigh those times when people remember to give thanks. So in summary, prayer, praise and worship, and giving thanks are our best positions in any battle. Trust in God and letting him do his work and giving him a positive environment to do it in. Remembering to give him some positive feedback and giving him thanks for all that he's done in our lives. Not just this one battle, not just this one moment in time, but in our lives. Okay, we'll see you next week.